Hi everyone, welcome back to another Creative Tap tutorial. Now in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to render out your roto splines within Nuke. I'm going to show you a couple of different techniques, um, some of which I think are really, really interesting. Um, so I've basically got my hand rotoscoped here and I've got these roto splines on top. Now like I said, I'm going to show you a couple of different techniques. Um, first one we're going to look at was actually, I don't want to take credit for this, it was posted up by somebody on the Foundry forum and he came up with Wouter Gilsing, if I'm, I hope I'm saying the name right, sorry if I'm not, um, came up with a very, very, very interesting way of doing this um, using a text editor. So I'm going to show you that route first of all, okay? So what we've got, I'm going to delete what we've got, oh, I'm going to put this to the side. This is my Roto node where I've got all of my Roto shapes. Um, so I'm going to copy and paste this. So I've got this Roto node by here, okay? So Roto 2, Hand Roto. Now, with that Roto node selected, again, I'm going to copy, so it's on my clipboard. I'm going to go into WordPad, okay? And I'm going to open up WordPad, and I'm going to paste all of the text within here, okay? So I've got loads and loads of text, okay? Now, coming back to this article, um, Wouter or Wouter came up with this really, really ingenious way, basically, of cop replacing all the occurrences of open parentheses F space 8192. So copy that to your clipboard. So replace all of these instances with this. This basically says replacing your Bezier's with your open splines. Okay. So if I copy this to my clipboard, okay, come back to WordPad, I'm going to go to replace, okay, and it's going to say find what. So we're going to find F open parentheses F open brackets 8192, and we're going to replace them with, then copy this, so control C again and replace with this. So if we just go replace all, it'll work through the document and replace all of those beziers with roto splines. Okay. Uh, so I'll click OK. And now I'm going to select control A. So select all of this text, control C, copy this to my clipboard, and I'm going to come back into Nuke. Ah, I've just opened Nuke X. Okay. Back into Nuke and I'm going to make sure I click in the node graph and hit control V. Okay, and what that's going to do is it's going to give me another node, so I can delete my original. It's going to give me another node. If I double click this, it's turned them all into, you'll see, uh, if I select this, it's turned them all into open splines and I can designate the thickness. So if I view the alpha channel of this, you'll see now that I've got all of these shapes as roto splines. And what I can do is turn ripple edit on I'm going to unlock all of my rotos, okay, unlock them all, and you can go through, select them, and basically with the smoothness, you can make them thicker if you wanted to, I don't want to, I'm going to make them as thin as I can, okay, so they're all the thinnest they can possibly be. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into motion blur and I'm going to turn mine on to shape, and I'm just going to make sure that motion blur is turned off for every single spline. So you can use that. You can keep the motion blur if you want, um, if you wanted to. But to be honest, I think I prefer mine without. You know, if I turned it on, I think I prefer mine without the motion blur. So I'm going to turn it off. Okay. Um, and then what I've done, I've got my. Um, so I've got my alpha channel. Turn ripple off. Remember, always turn ripple off. Um, I'm going to come out of my alpha. Um, turn the, yeah, no, stay in my alpha, sorry. Um, I'm going to turn the overlay off. You can get a filter, erode, okay? And you can erode that in if you want. I'm going to disable mine for now just to see how it looks. I'm then going to get a constant. So, new constant, just to make it whatever colour you want. I'm going to make mine, uh, I've already got green, so I'm going to make mine blue. I'm then going to get a copy node, okay? and switch these round. So we're copying the alpha from the A stream. So we're copying B over, over there. So basically when we view, when we view we've got the RGB coming in from the constant and we're carrying through our alpha and then we can just simply get a pre-mult node. So we're pre-multiplying the alpha. So come back out, we're pre-multiplying the alpha there. So we've got our alpha coming down um, we can erode it if we want. We're copying RGB and alpha into the same stream of the copy node. And then, so we've got RGB and alpha. And then we come down and we're pre-multiplying it. And we can then basically go um, user merged over, okay, A over B. So that is one way of doing it. Now if you play through, 
you can see that we've got these splines over it, okay? Um, so yeah, that's, that's one way of doing it. Okay, so I'm now going to show you method two. Method two is a little bit more of a pain, um, but it does work. You know, the method one may may error out. It's not, I don't know if it's been tried and tested and tested and tested, but um, method two, essentially, this is what I've got going on. So I'm going to come up here and basically dive into what I've done. Essentially, I took my roto with all these little roto shapes in there, and I've got a copy of it. Well, I made a copy of it by here. So if I get a copy, what I did is, here's my copy, is I made a roto node, and then I control double click this copy by here, and open my normal, my new roto node. Basically, what you've got to do is take each of your roto shapes and post them into individual, click and drag into individual rotos. So I'm hitting O to make a new roto, and then basically split in, let's say you've got 20 layers in here, you'll end up with 20 roto nodes, okay? I'm not gonna do it all, because you can see I've done it. So if I come here, I've got little finger tip, I've got middle finger tip, I've got middle finger knuckle, and I've got them all here, okay? They all then have an edge detect on them. So if I view my alpha, just for this one, for example, let's come to my alpha channel, where's my, Let's see where we are. Okay, so I've got my alpha channel for that. And then I've used an edge detect just to give me the edge by there. I've also had to turn off motion blur on each of them because otherwise it was giving me a thicker line in some areas and not in others. So once I had all these sorted, um, all my rotos separated out with um, edge detects, I got a merge node and I simply connected a and then B and then once you connect connected A and B you'll get an additional one on the left with that A2, A3 and basically connected them all up so then I've viewed my merge node and I've got them all piped in like this. What I've done then is I've got a constant, I've made the constant blue, I've got a copy node so I'm merging the alpha channels from the merge and the RGB here and so if I go alpha you can see come back out. I've got the alpha channel from the merge and the RGB from the constant. I then pre-melt. Okay, so I've got then this then animating and then what I'm doing is I'm putting A over B so then I can render out like that and I've got my splines and you can make them any colour you want. So yeah, I hope that helped you. Um, if you want to see any future tutorials, just leave a comment of what you want to see. Give a like and a subscribe if this worked for you and if you found it helpful and I'll see you in another tutorial.